Looking for an epic all-round performance longboard to add to your quiver? Well, let's talk about the Harley Ingui HI4 longboard. Hi guys, Chris from Step for Travel here. Welcome back to the channel. Now, before I get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any video goodness. Now today we're going to be talking about longboarding. Um, I'm a huge fan of longboarding and I've been a longboarder ever since I started surfing actually. It's the type of board that I'm most confident on in the ocean and I have a lot of experience riding quite a few different longboard models. Uh, so when I was looking to add a new longboard to my quiver, I was looking for a kind of an all-round performance board. A board that could handle those bigger days, easy paddle-ins, um, but also punchier conditions as well. But still have a little bit of traditional longboard style in there as well if I wanted it. So a little bit of hang 10 time, a little bit of board walking, but ultimately just a really well-rounded longboard. Uh, and that's how I came across the Harley Ingleby HI4 longboard in Thunderbolt technology. Really good performance board, but still offered some traditional options in there as well. Uh, so if you're looking for an all-round longboard to add to your quiver, this one's for you. So first off, who is the HI4 aimed at? Uh, well, the HI4 is the evolution of Harley's two times world longboard championship running board model, the HIHP. Um, him and Billy Tolhurst worked together to create a more well-rounded longboard that allowed a little bit more traditional kind of style of longboarding in there. So think nose riding and boardwalking, while still keeping the top end of the progressive side of things as well. Uh, so it's able to handle bigger punchy conditions, but also you can run to the nose and do some more traditional style longboarding on it as well. Uh, you may think this board is more aimed at the high-end advanced longboarders, but I personally think this is a really well-rounded performance longboard that's going to suit anyone from mid-range and intermediate up. Um, it's really good in less favorable conditions, but can also handle that punchier stuff as well. So it's a really good well-rounded model, which is going to suit a lot of surfers. So if you're looking for a single longboard in your quiver that will cover a huge variety of conditions and allow you to do more traditional style longboarding as much as performance style longboarding, this one's definitely for you. So now let's talk board breakdown and dimensions. Now the HI4 comes in two sizes, the 9.1 and the 9.3 option. Um, in comparison to the original HIHP, which it de is derived from, it's got slightly more mellow rocker, although it's still continuous from nose to tail. Um, and it's got slightly larger dims all around. So even though this makes uh, things a little bit more forgiving in a wide variety of conditions, there's that little bit of extra flick in the tail, which allows it to turn beautifully and sit in the pocket really nicely. And that means it can handle those bigger sizes of swell as well. Uh, it's also worth noting that the 9.1 has an 18 inch nose on it, whereas the 9.3 option has a 19 inch nose on it and slightly thicker dims as well all round. Uh, so if you're looking for something a little bit more forgiving or for a little bit more kind of nose riding ability, the 9.3 is a really solid option. Uh, also, if you're a little bit heavier as well or a little bit taller, the 9.3 option might be a little bit better underfoot. Uh, for me, I'm 185 centimeters and 82 kgs and the 9.1 goes beautifully. I absolutely love it. I don't feel like I want any more kind of nose riding ability out of this board or any more forgiveness out of it. It does exactly what I want it to do. and I'm sticking with the 9-1. Yeah. Now, when it comes to construction, the HI4 is a Thunderbolt longboard in Thunderbolt technology, uh, which is one of Firewise premium longboard techs. Um, the main difference is the Thunderbolt black option is uh, more carbon and is livelier underfoot, as well as being a lot lighter. Uh, for most everyday surfers, the Thunderbolt red construction is going to be absolutely perfect. It's really strong. It feels really good underfoot. Um, and yeah, it's a really good way to go. But if you are looking for top end performance or, or you're competing on the board, then the Thunderbolt black model option is the way to go. And if you'd like to learn a little bit more about the differences between the Thunderbolt constructions, make sure you check out the links in the description below. Now, when it comes to fin setup on the HI4, you really are spoiled for choice with that five fin box options. Uh, this means you can ride it as a single fin, a two plus one, or a quad, depending on the surf conditions and your own personal preference. Uh, now, when I first got the board, I whacked in a 9.75 Kelia Moniz longboard single fin, and that fin went beautifully in this board model. Uh, despite the fact it is a more high-end performance model, it also went really good as a single fin. And it was really nice in those smaller conditions, real nice flowy and a lot of hold on the nose as well. Um, I then also tested out the Harley Ingleby tri-fin setup as well, uh, which is kind of an iteration between a traditional two plus one longboard fin setup and a thruster. Um, now it comes with Harley's big side bites, which are pretty chunky and there's a lot of fin involved. Uh, but the center fin is only a five inch fin. So it's almost a thruster setup utilizing the longboard fin box in the middle and the two side bites. 
Uh, now I've never really surfed much long boards in terms of that kind of thruster style setup or thrusters in general, to be honest. And the first couple of surfaces I was a bit like, mm, it's okay, I definitely prefer it as a single fin. But as soon as I got used to it, that is now my go-to fin setup on the HI4 board. And it flows really nicely, turns beautifully in the pocket and can handle a huge variety of conditions. Uh, I've surfed this board up to well over head and a half on the points and it really holds beautifully turning off the bottom, keeps the speed, but flicks around really nicely in the pocket as well. So if you're looking for performance end of things, the Harley Ingleby Tri-Fin setup is definitely an awesome way to go. Uh, personally, at the moment, I've not whacked the quad fins in it at all um, to test out. It is on my to-do list, uh, but I've been having so much fun on the Tri-Fin setup that I just haven't really bothered. Uh, I spoke to Harley via Instagram about fin setups and he really likes the quad fin setup with kind of more open face waves or something a little bit hollower, just for that little bit extra bite. Um, so it really depends on kind of what surfing you're looking to do on this board and what conditions you're surfing the board in as well. But yeah, with that five fin setup, it does give you the versatility to swap between fins um, depending on the conditions, how you want to ride the board and just, you know, your own personal preference at the end of the day. But yeah, the Harley Ingleby tri-fin setup is definitely my go-to in the HI4. So what are the ideal wave conditions for the Harley Ingleby HI4 longboard? Well, as I previously touched on a little bit throughout this review, it's a really well-rounded longboard and can handle a huge variety of conditions. Uh, first few surfs, I took it out and literally just over knee, knee high, and I wasn't really expecting the board to be able to do much as it's quite tight as a performance longboard. And I was really surprised at the small wave capabilities on the board, especially with that single fin strapped into the center fin box. Um, I then surfed this board in a huge variety of conditions right up to just over head and a half at the points and it goes beautifully. In fact, the bigger it gets, the better this board performs. Um, I've surfed it at places like the pass and broken head in really nice punchy conditions. It rolls in beautifully, generates a lot of speed and with that tri-fin setup, it can really handle those bigger punchy days, flicks back into the pocket really nicely. It's got a really good overall flow to this board. Of course, you can also walk around on the board as well with that little bit of like slightly bigger dims compared with the HIHP model. And uh, so a bit of ball walking, bit of nose riding, you can mix it all up along with big cutbacks as well. And uh, so yeah, a very well rounded board that can handle everything from reeling points, punchy beach breaks and everything in between. So what is the Harley Ingleby HI4 longboard like to actually surf? Uh, well, given the fact that Harley Ingleby himself has two world championships under his belt, I had no doubt that the performance of this board was going to be great. But what I wasn't prepared for was how good it was in a huge variety of conditions, especially the lower end of the spectrum as well. Uh, the first few surfs I had on this uh, were about knee to thigh high, waist, uh, thigh high to waist, uh, a little bit mushy, and the board went great, especially with that nice single fin setup. Um, I've now surfed that board in a huge variety of conditions up to well over head and a half at the point, and it's handled everything I can throw at it. Uh, with that tri-fin setup, it just whips around in the pocket really nicely, generate a whole heap of speed, a lot of control, uh, but you can still boardwalk on it and spend some serious time on the nose, even in those bigger, punchier conditions as well. So it's a really great all-round board that can grab out of the rack no matter what the surf conditions are doing, uh, which also makes it a great long board for travel. So if you're heading somewhere, you're not sure what the surf's gonna be doing, this board can handle absolutely everything you can throw at it. Uh, I was a little bit dubious about how well the board would go when I first grabbed it off the rack because it is really light compared to other long boards, especially PU construction. And that Thunderbolt is quite light. It's also super durable. And I just was, I just thought maybe it'll be a little bit stiff underfoot. Pleasantly surprised with that board. It's super lively, a lot of feedback, great to surf. I can also handle a little bit of chop on the face as well, which is sometimes an issue with these epoxy long boards. But yeah, all round, I absolutely love the HI4. Feels great underfoot and it's just a great board to help progress your skills. So let's talk final verdict and pricing. I uh, know as you may have gathered from the rest of the review, I'm absolutely loving my HI4 and it's really revitalized my love for longboarding and also helped me progress it to that next stage and giving me some new challenges to get out there and perform well on bigger punchier conditions. Uh, the HI4 is just a well-rounded model that sits really nicely in my quiver and is one of those boards that I can grab no matter what the conditions are doing, uh, whether it's smaller or punchier and bigger out there as well. Um, now, when it comes to pricing, this is the big thing about this board that I think is going to be the biggest sticking point for a lot of people looking at it, um, and that's the premium price tag that comes with the Thunderbolt construction on this board. Uh, it comes in at just shy of 2,000 Aussie dollars, which is about 1,200 um, US or just over a thousand British, which is definitely a premium price tag for any long board at all, actually, to be honest. 
Um, now, I'll be totally honest, I picked up this board for a pretty bargain price at a Firewire factory sale. So I actually paid 750 Aussie dollars, which is an absolute steal. Uh, I actually grabbed a couple of boards for reviews in that sale, actually, so keep an eye out for those reviews coming soon. Um, so really, would I pay full price for this board if I had to go out and rebuy it, if I snapped it, for instance, or anything like that? I think actually, yes, I would. Um, this board has become an instant favorite in my quiver. It's one of my go-to boards now, probably the most surfed board I've got at the moment. Um, and it's just a really well-rounded, great performance long board that's just super fun. And I can grab it no matter what the conditions are doing. So yeah, if I did snap it, crease it, anything like that, I would be going straight back out, adding it back into the rack. Obviously, this is gonna come down to personal budget as well. If you do have the pocket for it, I would say yes, this is a great all-round performance longboard to add to your quiver. And if you're looking for one longboard that can tackle pretty much anything you can throw at it, this would definitely be it. But yeah, overall, high four, absolutely love it, frothing on it, can't wait to spend more time on it. And there you have it, guys. That's my full review of the Harley Ingleby HI4 longboard in Thunderbolt construction. If you've got any other questions about this board, please feel free to add them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. And check out the rest of my YouTube channel for heaps of reviews, guides, and more. That's it for this week, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week.